I've never beaten Minecraft. Let me explain. I have played hundreds of hours of Minecraft, slayed the Ender Dragon with friends multiple times, but never have I seen the credits roll in a world of my own. I decided that I would beat the game for the first time, but doing so normally would be too easy. I needed to make it a challenge. What is a way to beat Minecraft that would display the game knowledge I had gained over the years still be possible to provide an engaging challenge for my viewers and I to enjoy? I had settled on beating the game without being able to left click. This means that I would unbind my left mouse button from any in-game actions and I can't mine, destroy, hit, or attack anything. The only thing I could use it for was navigating menus and crafting since I could do that with my right click anyway. I streamed this challenge over my Twitch channel, so if you like challenges like this and enjoy the video, feel free to check it out and drop a follow. It took me three resets to find a village near spawn, which was really important for getting this run started. Sadly, the village had zero chests and loot, but I did have something better, an iron golem. I could use the iron golem to kill mobs, and when needed, I could let him die to get some iron ingots. I set my spawn in one of the local beds, and waited for night to fall. I decided that my best way to acquire blocks would be to let a creeper blow up near me, and grab whatever blocks they destroyed. Using this method, I was able to gather some dirt and wood so I could make a crafting table and chest in my little hut. I used the golem to kill some mobs so I could gather arrows and make a bow, which as you may know, is fired using my right click. I decided that after a while, it was time for the golem to die, as I needed his iron. He met his tragic end after valiantly defending the village, whose residents were slowly being massacred by the hordes of mobs I was luring in. Using the iron, I can craft the MVP of this run, the bucket. The bucket will be the single most important item in this run and must be protected at all costs. I decided to build a small farm for wheat which was difficult because in this challenge, any misplaced block cannot be broken unless I have a way to blow it up. After finishing the farm, I planted my crops while making an infinite water source right next to my house. While the wheat was growing, I searched for our next hill to climb, entering the nether. Since I wasn't going to be able to mine obsidian to build a portal, I had to create it myself. I needed to find a lava pool. Speedrunners use a neat trick that allows them to generate a nether portal inside a lava pool with just one water source and a bucket but it requires them to break blocks that they place down first, a privilege I did not have. I needed to find another way to build my portal. Upon finding a nearby lava pool, I marked the coordinates down, went for a swim, and grabbed my bucket to bring the fresh lava source back to my base. I built a little mold for the base of my portal, threw the lava in, and threw water right on top of it in order to create obsidian. This is how I would need to create every block of this portal. I needed to go back and forth to that lava pool for every block. Whenever I would generate obsidian, I would need to grab and place the water on the lava before it could flow, so I wouldn't accidentally generate any cobblestone and ruin the portal. Luckily, I was able to do this pretty easily, and 10 trips later, we added an unlit portal. Through my trips with the lava bucket, I realized a great utility for it. Turns out lava hurts things, who would have thought? I could use it to burn animals and gain cooked meat very easily, as well as fight back against mobs at night without using arrows. It was perfect. With my new weapon, I decided to venture into a cave in which I fell through a hole got ambushed, and fell even further, dying, losing the bucket, and having no safe way to go down. The bucket was gone. I needed a new bucket to keep this run alive, so I searched for a new village. While doing so, I found a ruined nether portal, which gave me some flint and steel so I could light our nether portal. I entered the nether to see if there was a fortress nearby, and the game was so nice that it just teleported me right into one. One less thing to worry about. We did it! Oh, we're in a fortress too! Yet. I couldn't do anything without the bucket. Luckily, just right through a little field, I had found another village, with not just a golem, but two golems and a blacksmith. I was set on iron, and our glorious bucket had returned to us. Now that we were good to continue with Bucket 2.0, I needed to gather blaze rods, and the best way for me to kill blazes was with arrows. So during nighttime, I would head to our second village and use the golems to kill skeletons and gather arrows. Once I gathered a few arrows, I traveled into the nether and looked for a blaze spawner which also happened to be right next to my portal. I cannot tell you how lucky I was to get the seed on my third reset. My trip to kill blazes netted me one rod, and after farming more arrows and killing more blazes, I ended up with a healthy amount of blaze powder. In order to locate the stronghold, I needed Eyes of Ender. And in order to craft Eyes of Ender, I need blaze powder, which I now had, as well as ender pearls. There were only two ways to gather ender pearls in this game. I could kill endermen for a 50% chance of them dropping one, or barter with piglins. I figured I would try bartering with piglins first, but I needed gold, and in case you forgot, I couldn't mine anything. I tried using beds in the nether to blow up veins of gold nuggets, but it proved to be more trouble than it was worth, so I decided I needed to kill Endermen. But how? 
Endermen are immune to all projectile damage, and teleport whenever they're hit. If they were to charge at me, I had no melee options to defend myself. I needed to find another way. What I decided to do was use boats. If I could trap an Enderman in a boat, I would safely be able to kill it, but not directly. I needed to wait for it to rain, because Endermen take damage in water. They will never spawn in the rain, but if they are trapped in the boat while it's raining, they will slowly die and hopefully drop me a pearl. After trapping and killing one Enderman, he gave me one pearl. I was able to use the Ender Pearl to craft one Eye of Ender. Using my one eye, I traveled a little over a thousand blocks from my base and was able to find out the general area of the nearest stronghold before I lost my eye. With the location of the end portal in our possession, I realized I needed a way to get down there. I couldn't dig down, so the only way would be for me to blow up a tunnel heading down to the stronghold, which would mean I needed TNT, and lots of it. I was able to get the sand I needed via a few creeper explosions, but I needed gunpowder. This meant I would need to kill a lot of creepers. At night, I would use my lava bucket to trap creepers, then remove it and let it die to fire damage, hopefully yielding me some gunpowder. During this time, I would be looking for endermen to trap in boats so I could gather more ender pearls. For the sake of time, and keeping my stream from being a waiting simulator, I allowed myself to use two cheats. I was allowed to set the time to night so I could farm creepers and endermen, and I was allowed to change the weather to rain, or else I may be spending multiple streams just to gather a few pearls. Even still, I would spend an entire stream just farming gunpowder and ender pearls only coming up with about 20 blocks of TNT, as well as 7 Eyes of Ender. With all of my other supplies in hand, I decided to see how close to the stronghold I could get. I set out to around where the stronghold was, set up a mini base, and set up a little tower to drop TNT from safely. A small forest fire later, and I ran out of TNT, but got nowhere close to as deep as I thought I would get. I decided to spend another few hours killing hundreds of creepers, and finally gathered a stack of TNT, and a few more Eyes of Ender to make sure that I would have enough eyes to activate the portal, no matter what. With what I hoped was the last of my preparation, I continued dropping TNT down my hole, and I was starting to run low with no stronghold in sight. But then, I came upon a little amethyst cave, and when I ventured down, it brought me straight to a door into the stronghold. Oh! We found it! We got it! We had found it. I carefully looked for the portal room, and once I did, blew up the silverfish spawner with my extra TNT, and killed the stragglers with my extra arrows. I set up another tiny base in the portal room, set my spawn, placed the eyes, and plunged into the end. I only took a few blocks at a time to build a bridge from spawn over to the main island, and then it was time. Speedrunners use a strat that allows them to kill the ender dragon with beds during a perch, and it requires two obsidian, which is exactly what I have from the ruined portal that we found earlier in the run. I crafted as many beds as I could using wool from a small sheep farm we built, and went straight for it. But what most people don't understand from the speedrunning strat is how precise you need to be with your beds. You need to blow them up at the perfect time so you can kill the dragon before it flies off and regenerates its health. I had never attempted this before, and was definitely struggling. Beds were a limited resource here, and if I were to run out, I would need to go all the way back to our village, farm wood and wool, just to try again. I tried doing that strat and wasted beds for almost an hour, until I decided I needed to destroy the end crystals, so that I would be able to slowly kill the dragon for sure, instead of trying to get lucky and one cycle it. I was able to destroy some of them with the little arrows I had left, but for the others, I needed to build up to each and every one of them, blowing them up with TNT or beds. Now that the dragon was finally vulnerable, I was able to go for the kill. It took a little bit more wool and wood farming to make sure I had enough beds, but in the end, I was able to defeat the ender dragon and finally see the credits of Minecraft roll, without having clicked the left mouse button even once. Yes! We did it! Let's fucking go! Let's go! I try to keep these videos short and easy to watch in one sitting, so if you like this type of content and want to see more, Subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on, or check out my Twitch stream which is where I stream this. Hope everyone has a good day and thank you for watching.